Hello and welcome to another week of Talk of the Town. The word is that with the AFL season not happening, it's a time to make changes for the good for football. No changes to our lineup, though. The chief football reporter for the Nine Network, Sam McClure. Hello. Sid, great to be here once again. And the Port Adelaide Premiership champion, Warren Treadrow. What are you wearing? Oh, this is a, uh, I'd like to say, 96 replica, but 97, we got smashed by Nord. We didn't get to find the showdown last week. Port fans have bought hundreds of thousands of these bloody things, and they can't wear them. So I can't believe our season still continues. We play on, and I'm wearing the prison bars. Get stuff, Collingwood. <laughs> Uh, Eddie, well, we'll that. get to the Port Adelaide Magpies uh, a bit later on. But firstly, Gillan McLaughlin guys caught my ear during the week uh, talking on Triple M's Hot Breakfast, where he talked about this is a time to find efficiencies in football, to maybe make the changes to streamline the different levels of Australian rules. And one of the ideas being floated is to look at absorbing the NAB League, what used to be known as the TAC Cup, and absorbing those clubs like the Dandenong Stingrays and the Oakley Chargers in the AFL clubs. Sammy, would it be possible? I think it would be. I mean, we've changed it a couple of times before. There's no reason that in these trying circumstances we couldn't change it again. But this is just one of the many ideas, Seb, that's being canvassed by the 18 club CEOs. We read during the week that they have come together and split themselves off uh, off into three groups. So we've got finance, we've got membership, and we've also got state leagues, which, of course, the, the NAB League, as it's currently called, you're quite right, will come under. So these are all the type of ideas that um, are being canvassed. But a lot of it comes down to cost. And I think that's why a lot of people were confused with what happened with Carlton and the Northern Blues treaders. And obviously there are possible changes in the sandfall that if you're going to disconnect um, with the, in their case, VFL side that you're affiliated with, in due course, is it going to cost more money to bring them on under your own club umbrella? Well, that's Pandora's box, isn't it, Sammy and uh, Seb? Because what do we know? I know in my home state of Adelaide, the Port Magpies, the jumper I'm wearing today, they are a foundation club. They play in the sample effectively as Port Adelaide's seconds team. But the Crows, who aren't a foundation club, have passed to pay $400,000 a year to play in the sample. So I would have thought if you're at uh, City Hall, the AFL going cost-cutting left, right and centre, what gets cut? Well, we know the reserves team competition national has now pretty much been Put on the back burner. Any other teams coming into the competition? Tasmania looks like it's gone in the back burner. I would think that the under-18 comp would still fit in that similar category. And then from myself, who looks for the interstate clubs, fine if Victoria wants to grow grassroots through the under-18s, that's all good. But is there a competitive advantage? The clubs will ask that. What's going to happen in Western Australia? What's going to happen in uh, Queensland, New South Wales, um, South Australia? How's that going to fit when we're all seen to be I can tell you right now, I spoke to a, 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 a current uh, football person who's been put on hold saying the salary cap and football department spend is going to be smashed. So they're talking $10 million into about six and a half. So I'm not sure how that's going to fit into the cost-cutting of what we're seeing with football right now. Traders, just on that, um, before we get back to Seb, Gillan McLaughlin's been really strong this week on saying that we've gone into this abyss, I guess, with 18 clubs and we'll come out of it with 18 clubs. Are you absolutely adamant that we need to have 18 or would you be happy to cull a couple or relocate one or two if it meant survival for the rest? Well, I think at the end of the day, what we're seeing now with this half a billion dollar loan says there's survival anyway. So mm. yes, it's underwritten by the banks. Uh, whoever made that decision in 2016 to sign and buy what was Docklands, Marvel, Etihad, all the different names, that is single-handedly safe football right now. I'm sticking with 18 clubs because if I'm a yep. player and I'm at mm. Gold Coast or I'm at GWS or I'm at Port Adelaide or North Melbourne, some of the teams that who have been getting financial assistance for a period of time, then they go, hang on, I've committed to those clubs. I don't want to then be put in Northern Territory or Tasmania or somewhere different. And the facts are the ultimate thing the AFL needs to do, the reason why I went to a 17-game season this year, is they need to get nine matches a weekend away mm. for the TV rights. That is the big bill. That is the big earner for the AFL, and that's the first thing they have to guarantee. So I'm happy they're sticking with it. Yeah, if it's one thing we've learned, it's that the whole industry is basically subsidised by the broadcast fee. So any reduction of the product you're offering would just mean that the league takes another step backwards. Speaking of club viability, though, Treaders, uh, Port Adelaide CEO Keith Thomas has said they will do everything they can to secure the future of the Magpies, the SANFL club, the way you started your career. And for people who aren't from South Australia, they probably don't realise 
what this club means. You know, it's one of the oldest Australian rules clubs in the country. In the SANFL, it's won no less than 36 premierships. I mean, it's an iconic organisation in South Australia. You were a part of one of the premierships in 1996. Why is it important to keep this organisation alive? I think from the Port Adelaide fans' perspective, from everyone else, they couldn't really give a stuff unless they actually want to be Port Adelaide, because that's how it is. It's almost like... That's some Collingwood refreshing perspective from you. But, but that's that's the realistic situation. Yes, they want to keep them in the comp, but they want to guarantee they're going to beat them so they can brag. But and for a bloke who, you know, sitting here in his prison bars jumper, grew up supporting the club and watched premierships almost every year or every year and a half that they were played from that period of 10 years from the late 80s, Port Adelaide boy are seeing now in the sample is not what it was then. Let's face it, it is a reserves team. It is aligned to the AFL licence, which has been good. That was taken apart. But realistically, I think that decision is going to come down to who's you know, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, and got the red texter out and crossing stuff at City Hall. Because if the AFL makes a decision to say, no, you can't, can't afford to have a reserves team, that's not going to be Port's doing. Their fans have been united for a long period of time now about us against the rest. I think it will continue, but in what form? As we say, we're still trying to work out what's going to happen on the tiers under, let alone um, we're trying to focus on the main game, which is the AFL right now, and everything else will flow. But I suspect they will go on, but I cannot be totally confident like Keith Thomas because we are entering, as you say, footy's abyss. We don't know what is happening going forward. And from the Port fans who hope desperately that the Magpies will play in the Sandful and align to the AFL, we don't know what's going to happen in five weeks' time or whether we're going to get a start in the season, let alone what we can talk about next year. Mm. Tred, it's just quickly, there's long been discussion about the idea of pulling together a national second grade of football, so maybe dragging out some clubs from the Waffle, from the Sample, the VFL clubs. You might even get a situation where you'd have relegation and promotion like the English Premier League. What are the chances of that ever happening now? Uh, fast forward 25 years and we'll have that next discussion. Oh, I think yeah, right. it was an idea. It was great. And also, too, bear in mind the AFL is, is pretty much said they're going to continue with the AFLW, which is a great move. But also that's a costly move because it doesn't pay for itself in its entirety at the moment. So I think any talk of a second tier comp is pretty much on off the back burner until all the debt has been uh, relieved and the clubs are back into financial positions. So it's there's one positive from all this I do like, though, is because they're going to control footy department spending, I think we're going to have an even playing field more so than ever before. It's probably not dissimilar, Trent, is, and Seb, to the situation in Tasmania. You know, I mean, before all of this hit us, I think it, it seemed like to a lot of us a fait complete that Tasmania would have a side in the next five years, if not ten years. That thought process now although no one might want to admit it, has been put on the back burner because the game was only talking about a 19th team because it could absolutely afford it. Um, the state government down in Tasmania could afford it. And now with all that money being spent elsewhere, maybe that's further back than we think. I think that's Sammy, absolutely there's certain. No... Yeah, absolutely certain. Sammy, there's no footy being played. We're missing high marks. We're missing big goals. But is yep. there a particular element of the game that you are missing at the moment? It's funny you say that, Seven Treaders. I pumped up the footy for the first time in a while and wandered down uh, to Gosh's Paddock here in, in Melbourne on, on Sunday. And I thought, what am I missing? That The big kicks, the goals, the marks, the snaps. But really, it's the goal celebrations that I'm missing. I've got <laughs> one in particular that I'm missing. And he kicked a lot of them last year. And that is Charlie Cameron. He's... Harley celebration was just unbelievable. And we haven't been able to see any of that. Tread is surely there's one that you're missing. Oh, absolutely. There's numbers. You can always pick up the phone to your mate. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, I was ahead of my phone. If this is your stitch up and get back from me from last week, then, mate, I am prepared. I'm all about embracing the emotion. This game is full of emotion. There's a lot of journos like you two parrots who smash people oh. all the time. Oh, and it's about letting that emotion out oh, when you need to. And nothing better after you kick a big goal. So take that one, you two. Right. So that was that wasn't actually me starting the Harley. That was me winding treaders up and it wasn't even oh. it wasn't even what I was getting him back for. Wait for that. Wait till oh. the end treaders. <laughs> Well, if you ha at home have a goal celebration you want to nominate as your favourite from footy, drop us a tweet. At footy on nine is the handle. We'll get a bit of a discussion going. Now, right here on Talk of the Town, we have a social club. And every week we induct a new member of the social club, which is an AFL player who's really caught our eye with their social media work. 
And this week it comes from Angus Brayshaw, Sammy, who appears to be a demon for barbecued onions. Uh, it's, it, it's an extraordinary turn of events. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. And then the best part about him doing this is that he then he did the radio rounds in the next 48 hours. To, to promote it, it. It was akin to him to kicking a goal after the siren and winning the game. He's done the radio rounds enough. It's, no, I'm just kidding. I loved it. Uh, I thought it was odd. But anything that's a little bit different that keeps us talking about <laughs> footy in times like this, it's good enough for me. But would you eat it? It's burnt, isn't it? It looks burnt. Oh, I'd eat it. <laughs> He's put but up can't, 29 can't posts choose in now. times like this. So, oh, Travis, you can't pick and choose. You might as well. They're, 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 they're the onions that fall on the ground next to the barbie. That's how bad they were done. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> poor old, poor old. Gus is just just flat as a pancake at the moment listening to you turn it. <laughs> I'm just impressed he's managed to get 29 posts up on this account already. I mean, he has committed Amazing. to yep. the barbecued onion. Sammy, anything else on social media that uh, you want to raise? Well, it's funny. My Instagram story last week seemed to raise a few eyebrows, but have a look at our man Warren on his own Instagram story, oh. posting his game face from when it looks wow. like he was. That's a not Warren, is it? Have a look at is this. It? That is Warren. He's high no, it's him there. not. And uh, it's I not. Didn't, I didn't realise, Treaders, that uh, yeah. you were actually playing in the mid 1960s when in fact, that club <laughs> was doing so well. I think they won six flags in a row in the late 50s. Yeah. That is incredible. You were, talk about being ahead of your time. You were ahead of a, a lot of time. Hey, I'm, I have to apologise. I called your parents before, but you've obviously done your homework. Port won a lot of premierships in the 60s, but no, that was in about the early 90s when I could I have see. sold hair and I was living the dream and I didn't know how to do it now because they realise you just don't need to know how to do it. You just shave I, it. I wonder what you would pay to get that hair back, Treaders. Uh, Not much because it'd fall out again. <laughs> All I'll say is one member of this... Uh, this tripod of a group here that uh, hasn't been done yet, so look out. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, dear. Like hey, yeah, Treaders, before we go, let's just see the prison bars in all their glory. Are you able to just elevate a little bit and uh, have a look? Cash I Converters can, but... was the sponsor. Yeah, geez, that was – I didn't know what that was. I thought it was free Nintendo games back then. I'm not sure it fits <laughs> anymore. What do you reckon? Mate, you've just been hitting the bench press a bit too hard. <laughs> no, it's called food. It's called holidays. Come early. <laughs> so, Thanks for you two for the bench press. press. Yeah, hot dogs. <laughs> Have a good hot dog. Oh, dear. Well, this has been Talk of the Town. Sam McClure, the Chief Football Reporter for the Nine Network. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> and Warren Prison Bar Tread Ray, thank you for your time. Call me anytime, boys. <laughs> oh, no. No. See you next week. <laughs>